All right. So, you ready? Open your books. It's 790 if you have the faithful version. We're going to read Proverbs chapter 26. And this entire chapter is really about how not to be a fool. And we know a lot of the Proverbs are about being wise and not to be a fool. But this chapter really focus, focuses on not to be a fool. So we're going to talk about that. And let's begin. Chapter 26, verse 1. As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not becoming for a fool. In other words, it's just not going to happen. We're not going to have snow in summer and rain in the harvest. And as rain in harvest, so honor is not becoming for a fool. It's just not going to happen. Don't expect it. Let's go to verse 2. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse without cause shall not come. Now this is a difficult proverb to understand. The key here, the operative word here is curse. Curse. It's without cause. So if someone gives you a curse without cause, it doesn't really have a foundation. It's going to be like a, a wandering bird. Just nowhere to land. No meaning. See? As the swallow by flying, so the curse without cause shall not come. So that's what a fool does. A fool can curse you without no foundation. They curse you for no reason. As game. As a sport. It's just the way they think. Now, God doesn't do that. Everything God does has a foundation. It has meaning. It has purpose. So let's move forward to verse 3. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the fool's back. Those all go hand in hand, don't they? Because a fool is constantly having to be corrected. So we want to be corrected. We all have a bit of foolishness in us, right? Why do you think God is giving these proverbs to us? And doesn't the Father discipline us? Just as your physical parents discipline you, when you walk with God, He will discipline you. So you want to be corrected because it gets the foolishness out of you. Verse 4. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. Now, that's like evil for evil. You know how you're told not to render evil for evil? Someone throws mud at you, you throw mud back. Remember Jesus Christ Someone spit in his face. Did he spit back? No. And I want you to go, actually. Let's go to 1 Peter 3, 9. 1 Peter 3, 9. And we read here by the apostle, not rendering evil for evil or abuse for abuse. So this is not what we want to do. It is the way of the world. You hit me, I hit you back. You take from me, I'm going to take from you. We don't want to do that system. And so don't answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. Now, you ever hear someone say, after a dumb question, you know, that doesn't deserve an answer? Well, that's one. That's like one of these sayings. You know, a fool just utters something really ridiculous, stupid. It doesn't deserve an answer sometimes. You're better off remaining silent. Now, who remains silent 
when he was faced with adversity by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It was Jesus Christ. Sometimes he chose to be silent, didn't he? And they mocked him for that. But then there were times when he spoke up and he answered a fool. That's in the next verse. See? Verse 5, answer a fool according to his folly. Now, it seems like a contradiction here, but it is not. So that he may not be wise in his own conceit. You have to call him out sometimes, don't, don't we? So, in the prior verse, we don't want to give... Um, how was that saying? Pearls before swine. You know, God's truth before the swine. They're just going to uh, mock it. So, but in this verse, it actually says answer them. So you have to call them out. You can't just let the fool just go all over you constantly, 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 constantly. There is a time to stand up for truth. But you have to be discreet in this. And we, there's other proverbs about being discreet. You don't do it to put down the person. You answer a fool according to his folly so that he may not be wise in his own conceit. There is a time to show what the right way is. Okay? And remember, Jesus did both. He stayed silent and he also an answered them according to righteousness. Now remember, Jesus Christ always answered using biblical knowledge. And that's what we have to arm ourselves with. Remember, the sword is the word of God. Now, he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. That's talking about the physical sword. Okay, but we are to live by the spirit of life, by God's word, his sword. And in verse 6, he who sends a message by the hand of a fool, now imagine that, here, take this letter to the castle, and it's a fool. He who does that cuts off the feet and drinks down damage. It will never get there. And if it does, it could be thwarted. It could be, it could arrive late. There's many reasons you don't want to put your trust with a fool. Okay, verse 7, as the legs of the lame hang limp, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. Jesus' parables never remained limp, did they? They had power. They had essence. They taught a great story, a great lesson indeed. Verse 8, as he who ties a stone in a sling... So is he who gives honor to a fool. So be careful who you, you uplift and you give honor. There's a time to compliment. But then there's a time to remain silent. Now, if someone, someone knows that you have a lot of credibility, let's say in the church, you study the scriptures, you have a good foundation, you speak of the kingdom. And someone comes to you and goes, did you hear that message by that minister for the, uh, the last two Sabbaths? And it had some heresy in it. You know what heresy is? Everything that's against the kingdom. But it was mixed with some good. And you ask this person, what did you think? And you shall know them by their fruits. And this person just compliments the minister, oh, I went to high school with him, and he's a great guy, he invites me over to his house, and he gives me a leg of lamb with that mint, mint jelly, and he serves me a nice cold beer, and, you know, you can give a wrong, you paint the wrong picture, okay? You must call a spade a spade and a heart a heart. So it's important to not give honor to a fool, so, because then you're tying a stone in a sling, which creates damage. 
Verse 9. As a thorn goes up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. It's pretty much self-explanatory. If any of you have witnessed a drunk, he is a, it's, it's a, a thorn. And a parable in the mouth of a fool is the same thing. You know, it's all over the place. It's like wobbly, wobbly, okay? Just kind of like this pixelation right here. See how unclear it is? That's the parable of a fool. It's not high definition, that's for sure. Okay? Verse 10. The great God who formed all things. Now that's one of the sayings. The great God of our Creator who formed all things both rewards the fool and re rewards transgressors. You, some say that's unfair. But you have to know, you have to understand that this earth is not all about God's system. It's the kingdom to come. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's where everything will be fair. Here on this earth, because of Adam partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it caused the situation to be upon us for all of mankind. And everything is not fair here. We live in a world of vanity. Sin is running amok. It's chaotic. And yet, we got to live in it, but not be a part of the world. Now, the wicked can be rewarded. Um, I want you to go to Matthew 5, verse 45, but it's only temporary. Matthew 5, that's the Sermon on the Mount. One of the greatest chapters in all the Bible. Matthew chapter 5. Let's go to verse 45. This is Jesus the Christ speaking. Okay, verse 44, let's start. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and praise for those who despitefully use you and persecute you, so that you yourselves may be the children of your Father who is in heaven. He's talking about God in heaven. For he, that's God, causes his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. So, everyone has potential. God gives. He's a giver. Remember when Stephen was getting stoned? He uttered the same words that Christ did when he was being crucified. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. So that all ties in together. Go back to Proverbs chapter 26. Okay. Verse 10 we read. Let's go to verse 11. As a dog returns to its vomit. Ew. So a fool returns to his own folly. Do you know what the definition of insanity is? You know, you heard it. That's, that's insane, man. It means you keep doing the same thing and you expect different results. This is the definition of insanity. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 11. Put definition of insanity. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool returns to his own folly. Okay? And they'll keep doing it. It's like a continuous loop. I want you to go to Proverbs 23. It explains this more thoroughly. Just go back a couple pages. Proverbs 23, and we'll start on verse 30. Okay? Those who stay long at the wine, that means just gulp, 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 and they just keep drinking it. 
They do not know how to have self-control, which is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Those who go to seek mixed wine, it's, it's their desire. That's what they do. Oh, tonight, yeah, we're going to get drunk tonight. Yeah, let's do it. That's on their mind. Not God's kingdom. It's about getting what they call wasted. And everything is a waste, too, in the end. You'll see. 31, do not look upon the wine when it is red, when it gives its color in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like an asp. And stings like an adder. Your eyes shall look upon strange things. And your heart shall speak perverse things. Just like a fool. Because you're drunk. You lost control. Yes, you shall be as one who lies down in the middle of the sea. Can you imagine that? In the middle of the sea. Or as one who lies upon the top of a mast saying, they struck me. I was not hurt. They beat me, but I did not feel it. When I awaken, I will seek it yet again. There's the loop, the continuous loop, a dog returning to his own vomit, the definition of insanity, the way of Satan, the devil, the way the society runs today and teaches, which has forsaken God. God's way produces. It is the way of the wise. It's, it's a way of productivity. That's where you want to be, my friends. Don't you want to be in the kingdom of production? It all starts here, knowing what to run from, and that's to stop being a fool. Let's go back to that verse. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool returns to his own folly. Now, you ready for a golden nugget? A golden nugget is in Revelation 3, verse 16, that ties in. With this verse, Revelation 3, talking about the different churches of God, Revelation 3, and you go to the last one, which is Laodicea, you know, the people judge, and let's go to verse 16, it has a, something that happens to them if they do not change. What happens to a fool if he doesn't change? So then, because you are lukewarm, you're not hot, you're not cold, you're neither cold or hot, I, that's God, will spew you out of my mouth. Vomit. Now, will God return to his own vomit? The dog returns to his own vomit. But I ask you the question again. Will God, the Almighty, return to his own vomit? The scripture says it's a dog that does. So, do not, if you're in this state of being lukewarm, get out of it. Become hot for the Lord, filled with zeal, seeking his kingdom. Do not stay lukewarm. Those that do, eventually, if they never change, the kingdom's coming. It's not waiting around for this guy. Come on, come on, get, get moving here. Eventually, God will spew him out of his mouth, which is his body, right? Isn't the church the body of Christ? Now, that's a golden nugget. And once you're spewed out, which you never, never, never want to have happen to you, you're out. Because he won't return to his own vomit. So once you commit yourself to be in the body of Christ, that's God the Father, do not be spewed out. It's just another definition of the unpardonable sin, which Fred Coulter gave a sermon on. 
not too long ago. It's blasphemy against God's way. And there's no hope once you do that. But we have hope, and it is the kingdom of God. We are not to look backwards like, who did that in Sodom? Come on, first one to answer, who's the quickest typer? Who looked back, became a pillar of salt? Lot's wife. Yes. Do not want to go backwards, because God is a God who goes forward. Let's go to verse 12. Do you see a man wise in his own conceit, pumping themselves up? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Good job, Avidy. Lot's wife. Verse 13. The lazy one says, There's a lion in the street! So he can't go out there. Basically, it's an excuse. There's a lion out there. So he doesn't go out there, does he? It's a big time excuse. You know, like, there's no jobs. United States government's not hiring. There's a lion. Isn't that the same thing? God doesn't make excuses. God can open up any door for you if you commit your life first to the kingdom and seek his righteousness and start throwing out those seeds, you know, applications. I don't know if it's that time for you yet, but when you're 16, you can pursue getting a job. You can even work before that if you can, like through the family or whatever. But God always blesses. He will not bless you, however, if you say, there's a tiger out there. You know, if it was in the ocean, you know, oh, there's a, there's a shark in the water. There's always an excuse, huh? We don't want to make excuses, for that is the fool's avenue. Verse 14, as the door turns upon its hinges... <sighs> So does the lazy man turn upon his bed. Remember last week? One second, one second. Oh, bored. Those two miserable words. It's uttered out of the mouth of a lazy man. Okay? One that doesn't like productivity. Which, in turn, they don't like the kingdom. Because the kingdom is all about increase. The increase of his government forever shall expand. It says that in the book of Isaiah. Forever, in all directions. Do you imagine that? That's like the universe. You know how the universe is expanding in all directions? That's just a type for the kingdom to come. Verse 15, the lazy man hides his hand in his bosom. Or his dish, his plate. It wears him out to bring it back to his mouth. You know, and they develop this big, giant belly. It's like this big, and they get tired to even reach for their plate. Now, do you want to be around that guy? Like you said there was a Bible study at 5 o'clock. You know, your company, pick good company. You be around that guy, you're going to become a fool. Okay. Let's go to verse 16. The sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can give a reason. <laughs> It's because they have a blindfold on, okay? And he's always wiser than everyone else, you know? It's, it's funny how someone can't take advice when they have a blindfold on, if they're not being humble. Let's say their blindfold is cigarettes. So they're smoking cigarettes all the time, you know, one pack a day, 
And then these seven individuals, seven friends say, come on, dude, you got to get off these cigarettes. They're like cancer sticks for you. I can see it. It's, it's making your, it's, you're like sucking in. We were looking like you're like a skeleton or something. Come on, I've known you since kindergarten. Then, you know, another friend and seven friends tell them, get off these, can, this cancer stick. And so he doesn't listen. What does he do? He says, the sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can give him a reason. And all the reasons are legit. But again, wants to remain blindfolded. It's the definition of insanity. Keep doing the same wrong thing over and over again, which defines a fool. Verse 17. He who passes by and meddles with strife, not his own, is like one who takes a dog by the ears. Now, it's not talking about a little chihuahua, okay, or a Pomeranian. It's talking about like a Doberman pincher. You know, try to grab a Doberman by the ears or a German shepherd. It's just not going to work out well for you. So you don't want to get involved with other people's business when they're at strife with each other because it's going to create more chaos, okay? I knew uh, just a few months back a church of God that I used to go to um, had a member who I know really well. Well, they were in conflict with each other. You know, like that happens in a lot of churches of God, sadly. But again, we're all human. And a big conflict. Well, I'm friends with both. Okay? So both wanted to know, well, was mostly one party wanted me to take a side and get involved. I quoted the scripture. I didn't say anything. I just put it on an email and said, I will not be involved in this. And I put Proverbs 26. 17, he who passes by and meddles with strife does not his own is like one who takes a dog by the ears. So you might want to put that proverb in your back pocket for when you have two friends getting into it and you don't want to be involved. Maybe that will help wake them up. Verse 18, or like a madman who throws firebrands, arrows, and death. Ugh. So is the man who deceives his own neighbor and says, Am I not only joking? That's a lie. I was just joking. Dude, come on. You made me go all the way to Temecula. I had to drive an hour and a half and you just said joking? Okay. You ever done that? Listen to a joke, but you thought it was real and it cost you time? It just sucked away time from this precious earth that you have only so many minutes to spend. This is why we are not to joke around. We are to, we are to dabble in the truth. That's what we are to dabble in, not in these little nonsense uh, jokes. We don't want to be like a fool and speak nonsense. Verse 20. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out. Now, are you ready for something huge? You ready? This verse proves that the lake of fire will not burn forever. See, where there is no wood, the fire goes out. The Proverbs speak truth. T-R-U-T-H, explanation mark. Well, when the lake of fire is burning and, and, and the Apostle Peter says it's all the elements and everything burning, when those eventually burn out, there's no more fire. So those that believe that this fire is going to forever and ever 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 burn physically, God is a God of spirit. He didn't create this physical realm, this little model, you know, 
the one that has entropy, the second law of thermodynamics, decay, corruption, to last forever. He said he's going to roll it up like a scroll, and it will dissolve. And in Revelation 21, for whoever doubts this, it says, the old earth, the former passed away. What does passed away mean? Jesus Christ says, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall not. Now is Christ a liar or does he speak truth? They will pass away. And when they're burned up like the wood here, where there is no wood, the fire goes out. Isn't there power in the Proverbs? And where there is no tail bearer, the quarreling ceases. This is why you need to pick your friends wisely. Stay away from the ones that are tattletalers. God doesn't like the method of tattletaling. Verse 21. As charcoal to burning embers and wood is to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. Ugh. It's like wherever he walks, there's strife, there's problems. You know people like that? That's like every time you see them, it's like, I mean, you could have just been in a car accident and stuff and like almost died, but somehow their story trumps that one. Somehow, you know, it's, there's some kind of problem in their life that's so huge and they do it with strife, and they have anger towards others, and it's all everyone else's problems. My boss arm, my boss, you know, their neck, shooting their neck. They get really mad at just everything because they're walking in a way of a fool. They're like burning coal. And wherever you put burning coal, just watch. Put it in your, in any area, it's going to start burning drapes and curtains. So you bring these burning coal people into your realm, into your house, your curtains are going to start burning, okay? And you're going to have to take buckets and start putting out these unnecessary fires that take away from the kingdom journey. So be wise and choose your friends wisely. Okay? The second part of verse 22, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Oh! You allow these people to run your life and you get involved with them, you become sick, right in the stomach. Ugh, it can be cancer, all kinds of sweating, and I'm just feeling depressed. And I would say 70% or more of the times when people are sick, like not just getting the flu or something, just like real sick all the time. There's something that's they're not practicing right. Okay? There's a proverb. There's a method. They're not seeking the kingdom. There's something like a stumbling block in their way that hurts their belly. Fred Coulter talks about this a lot, that most sickness is caused by the wrong methods of God in their mind. They're not seeking the kingdom. So if you do get sick, you got to step back and pray to God. And what is this? Get this out of my life and fight the cause of the matter. Verse 23, burning lips and a wicked heart are like a broken piece of pottery with silver dross. Oh, you know, look at this piece of pottery. It has silver. Oh, look at the dross, the silver, but it's broken. Okay. It's not good. You can disguise it as much as you want, but it's still broken. Okay? Verse 24, He who hates and disguises it with his lips stores up deceit within himself. Have you ever seen this in life? Have you ever done this? Just look at Christmas. It's all dressed with a bunch of silver lining, isn't it? Tinsel, bright lights, apple pie, mm, the smell of Christmas tree, evergreen tree, all these things surrounding it, but its deep inner core is based upon a lie. 
paganism. It's what it is. It's just like this verse. You can dress it as much as you want, but it's still a lie. Verse 25. When he makes his voice gracious, do not believe him. For seven hateful things are in his heart. It's kind of like today's politician. You know, the warm voice. My fellow citizens. And they speak and they, they have the perfect chiseled face. And they compliment you and uplift you. And they just tell you things that make you, oh, I'm so happy about myself. Yes, I'm me. I'm happy. Yes. Keep voting for him. But then there's real problems. And they don't talk about those. They don't talk about the moral compass has gone south. You ever hear politicians talk about our moral compass? The things of God? They can't talk about God because they figure they'll lose votes. I'm going to vote for one thing. I'm going to vote for God's kingdom to come. That's where we need to focus on in everything. So beware when someone with an evil intention compliments you, okay? Because I've had it happen to me where a friend comes to me and goes, Randy, oh, you, 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 need, you, you did this and this and this and names like all these huge compliments or something that I did or whatever. From, and then all of a sudden you just wait a second, you know, as soon as we're eating, as soon as his food swallowed down. Hey, I was wondering, um, can you help me, um, da 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 and he wants this big favor or something, after he complimented. Is that a time to ask for something? So understand when you compliment someone, don't follow it by asking for something. In fact, give something more. You know, compliment the compliment. <laughs> but this guy doesn't compliment the compliment, does he? See? He makes his voice gracious. Do not believe him, for seven hateful things are in his heart. He has an agenda. Verse 26. He whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be revealed before the congregation. Who's the congregation? The church of God. So if anyone who has a deceitful plan in the church of God, he will be found out. Before the congregation. This is a promise. Verse 27. Whoever digs a pit shall fall into it. Can anyone give me an example of someone who dug a pit for someone else and they fell into it? It doesn't have to be a pit. That's just a metaphor. But they did something to get someone in a trap. And then they fell into it. Can anyone name a Bible character that tried to set someone up? Haman in the book of Esther. Yes. Caitlin got it right. Great answer. That is a, a wonderful story. Lots of lessons in it. We don't want to be that guy. We are not to dig holes and make life tougher for people. We are to help fill the holes and make life easier for people. Isn't that what Christ did? Okay, let's go to verse 28, which is the last one. A lying tongue hates those afflicted by it. And a flattering mouth works ruin. We don't want to lie. That's the second inclination right here in this Proverbs 26. We are not to joke around, to lie. What is God's word called? The word of truth. It doesn't joke around. Ah, I was just joking. Do you imagine that? You know, seek first the kingdom. And then the trumpet sounds. We finally go there. Ah, I was just joking. Ha ha. Oh. Would God ever do that? Humans do this all the time with their practical jokes. They're everywhere now on YouTube. Practical jokes. That is not God's way. 
If it's not God's way, it will not produce. This whole chapter is about running from a fool. Stop it. Be wise. Seek God's avenue. And be on it. Be a light that shines. And one day, you'll be given a crown. Imagine that. God giving you a crown that is incorruptible. In other words, it never, never, never wears out. That's what we need to focus on. And when we wear that crown of righteousness, we will do what is right and we will serve one another being selfless, helping one another. How much do you want that crown? Strive for it. You can start now. Chapter 26 concludes. There are great lessons indeed, isn't there? I hope you enjoyed this chapter.